Hello and welcome to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel for today's very special Viaplay Cup semi-final preview. Joined by two men that know what it's all about in this competition, Tam McManus and Lee McCulloch, Lee, three-time winner of this competition, and Tam, one-time finalist loser. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tam, let's, let's start with Hibs, of course, um, playing against Aberdeen in the first of the two semi-finals. On Saturday, winless in five just now. How important is it to try and bounce back this weekend? Oh, listen, I think it's not only for Hibs, for Aberdeen as well. I think it's a massive game for both clubs. I think with Celtic being out, you know, the other four teams will, will, will fancy winning it. I know Rangers will be favourites, but Hibs will, will think if we can get past Aberdeen and get to a final, then you never know what can happen. So, not in a great vein of form, neither are Aberdeen. Um, so, it's a difficult one to call. I think the, the bookies have, can't split them either. I think it's pretty tight. So, listen, it's who turns up on the day, who plays well on the day. You maybe get a wee break here or there, it maybe get through, but... Hopefully that's Hibs because uh, I think Hibs, you know, it's been a wee while since they were in the final and I would like to see them back in one. What does that do when Celtic are knocked out? For, for all of the teams in the competition, not just Hibs, but Aberdeen as well, the Celtic have had a, a stranglehold on, on this competition and all domestic competitions for so long that it really feels like for all of these teams that, that this trophy can be theirs. Yeah, I think as soon as Celtic go out, I think everybody fancies it. I think Rangers automatically become favourites, um, but... I think, as you said, Celtic have been dominant in cup competitions, league competitions for a long time. And, you know, when they go out, everybody thinks they've got a chance. So, yeah, I think it's vitally important for Aberdeen and Hibs to get the final, then you never know what can happen. Yeah, we, Aberdeen, has been a really tough start to the season for them just now. Oh, it's, it's not going great last weekend. We saw them lose to, to Kilmarnock again. Barry Robs is starting to be under a little bit of pressure. Do you think, you know, a big win in the, the semi-final, that could alleviate some of the pressure that's on the manager just now? Yeah, it can take some of the pressure away uh, to, to get to a final still in European football. Um, they've just had so many games and they're expected to come back and win in the and win in the league after the games. I know they've got a big squad, but I agree. I, th I think Robson is under a little bit of pressure. Mm. So he needs this win. But you've basically, in my opinion, you've got two teams that are only really hitting top form just now. So, as Tam said, you might need a wee bit of luck on the day. Um, I can see it being really tight. I can see this game being really nervy as well. Um, because, as you're touching on there, with Celtic being out, the chance to go up against in a final, whether it's Rangers or Hearts, it doesn't matter. They've got to fancy their chances. Can this be a real turning point for, for Barry Robson? Because... If you look at last season, Aberdeen got to the semi-final same stage and they lost to Rangers and the wheels just come off for, for Jim Goodwin at that point point. it totally fell apart. Can that do the opposite this year? It can. Yeah. You can. That can be the start of the momentum, I think. They didn't start well. Then they went through a little phase. They won a couple of games and everybody's saying, that's it, they're going to kick on now. And they've hit that slump again. So they can't really get that momentum going. But with this game coming... Um, you take great confidence for, for winning se semi-finals knowing there's a final round the corner and for Barry everybody's playing for their spot in the final then so every every game the intensity goes up as, as the final gets closer So, but the other side of that is confidence goes expectation levels the stands start getting louder so it's the same with Hibs though Aberdeen are in my opinion Aberdeen need it more than what Hibs need it, but um, Hibs, their forum has been up and down, they're throwing away late goals. Uh, I just, I can see it being tight. It's a really tough one to call. Yeah. Tam, let's talk about the managers in this one and, and, and in all semi-finals because there's, there's four managers here who are all less than six months into permanent positions at the club, which is a really strange situation. There's no really anyone with, with proper experience in, in this competition. Can you, as I, as I said to Lee there, can you really see this if, you know, we spoke about Robson, but for Nick Montgomery, who's won less than five, albeit there's been a lot of draws in there, what would that do for him and, and for the Hibs support to get behind him if you're thinking, right, there's a final, Hamden, no Celtic in the competition, that's surely a great start to the season. Yeah, isn't it? Listen, Hibs, Aberdeen, you know, it's, you've got two, two competitions to win every season, you're not going to win the league, unfortunately it's a two-horse race, well, it's been a one-horse race <laughs> recently, so it's, it's, it's vitally important that you get to semi-finals, you get to finals if you're Hibs, Aberdeen, Hearts, so it's a huge game for both managers, both young managers just in the job, um, and it would give you a little bit of breathing space, I think, with supporters, it gives you a wee bit of kudos, a wee bit of credit in the bank, when you hit bad times you can look back and say, well he got us to a final. You know, he won a trophy for us. It just gives you a wee bit of a wee bit of leeway with the supporters. And Barry Robson is under a little bit of pressure. The performance at Kamala was miles off the standard that Aberdeen expect. 
and it's taken a little bit of time for Nick, as you said. It's he's only in the job. He's he's not one in five league games, but some of the performances have been decent, particularly one against Celtic. So. I think Barry, I agree with Jig, Barry is under a little bit more pressure, um, so it would be more important for him, but at the same time, I think it's important for Nick Montgomery to put his stamp on the team and to get Hibs into a final, you know, he's only in the job, you know, a couple of months would be a great start for him. Sam, you've been in this position as a Hibs player, you've won a semi-final in, mm. in the League Cup, what's different about it when, when you go to Hamden? What, what, what are the differences you notice as a player, because if managers always say it's just the same as any other game, but, you know, that's not true, is it? No, it's not true. Listen, I, I was at Hibs. We played. Uh, we, we beat Celtic in the quarter final at Easter Road. It was the first game they'd lost that season under Martin O'Neill, and then we played Rangers in the semi final, and we were massive underdogs. I remember looking back at the squad. You know, Barry Ferguson, Arteta, Michael Moles. You know, we had myself, Gary O'Connor, Scott Brown, Kevin Thompson, Stephen Whitaker. Very, very young team, and we were massive underdogs, and we went one 0 behind. And I was just talking about a little bit of luck. I think Mikel Arteta missed a penalty to go two nothing, and. We got a lift from that. Stephen Doby came off the bench and scored for us. And we managed to take Rangers to penalties. And then Frank De Boer missed a penalty. And we, we actually beat Rangers, which is a huge upset to beat Rangers. So we beat Celtic, we beat Rangers. And then we got Livingston in the final, who at that time were far more experienced than us. Uh, we took 42,000 fans. Hibs fans in Livingston had... <laughs> <laughs> three, three thousand, and we were and we were we were favourites to win it, and we and we lost two nothing. So that's that's probably one of the biggest disappointments in my career, not winning a trophy with Hibs when we we feel we should have after beating Celtic Rangers. But in terms of a semi final, you know, we were clear underdogs, so there wasn't a lot of pressure on us. But in terms of the Hibs and Aberdeen, I think there's pressure on both because it's a fifty fifty toss up game. What do you put that cup final defeat down to? Because you beat Rangers, beat Celtic, you're just listing off some of the players in those yeah. squads. Are, Infinitely better than what you faced in the final. Was it nerves? Did the, the pressure, the occasion get to some of the players? Yeah, possible. Team, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it was a very young team. I think I was about 22, 23, and I was one of the oldest players in the team. We had a very, very young team. And Livingston at that time had David Fernandez, you know, uh, Jamie McAllister, right. um, Burton O'Brien, David McNamee, Rubio, Marvin Andrews, experienced team, Stuart Lovell. Uh, experienced team, they handled the occasion better than us. We froze a little bit on the day. The first goal was always going to be massive for us. If we got it, I think we'd have won. But Livingston got it and we, I'm not saying we bottled it, but we, we, we didn't know how to come back from that as a young team. So, no, nah, it was a huge disappointment for every Hibs supporter, but listen, there's a, there's a real opportunity for them to get back to, to Hamden in a final if they can beat Aberdeen. Yeah, we, Hibs haven't won this competition since 2007, Aberdeen not since Dent McInnes won it in 2014. Is that too long for clubs of this size to not be winning the League Cup? Good question. I, I think with the dominance... In, in Scottish football, probably not. Um, you always hope that Rangers and Celtic are going to get each other early in the mm. competition yeah. to give, let's say, give the others a chance. Um, but for Aberdeen and Hibs, it's a one-off game and then you, you've got the final. The final will take care of itself, whoever they're going to play. But luck is going to be involved and I think is massive the experience of it and the expectation levels of it. Maybe mm. the team you you were in were were thrived under being mm. being underdogs. Yeah. And maybe you go to the final, maybe he's were favourites, I don't mm. know. Yep, we were at the time. Mm. So all that comes into play. Uh, mindset comes into play. So yes, I I don't think it is too long because Rangers and Celtic are, are basically dominating, aren't they? Right. Who do you think will be the key men then for for Hibs and Aberdeen, experienced players like you know Graham Shinney within Aberdeen, who sure have done it before. Sure, yeah, definitely. Uh, Majowski, uh, yeah. if, if he if he plays, uh, Duke is comes up with important goals now and again. I'd probably say the three of them, uh, if they turn up, they'll they'll make it difficult. They'll make it really difficult for Hibs. Tom, who's going to be key for for Hibs? And it was a lot of, a lot of changes in in the game through the week, but you would suspect that they'll go back to you know. Martin Boyle will come back in, Joe mm -hmm. will come back in, David Marshall will come back in. Yeah, I think he'll go with his strongest team, obviously rested a couple during the week there, David Marshall, uh, the, the guys you mentioned, Boyle, Newell, and they'll, they'll come into the team. I think in terms of Hibs, they have shown um, that they have, they're a threat going forward, and the front three could be crucial for them. You know, Johan, on his day as a match winner, we've seen that this season, he's hot and cold, but when he's hot, he's very, very good. Martin Boyle. Scored a hat trick in the semi final against was it against Rangers, um, so he's got great memories there as well. Uh, Dylan uh, Venti Lafondra. So Hibs have got better options, I think, in the, in the front areas. But 
it's going to be a, it's going to be a very very tight game. I don't see anybody winning you know three or four nothing. It's going to be on the day who turns up. Um, it's going to be nervy, and I think if Hibs can keep Miofsky quiet, who's a top player for me, very very good player. I think if you can keep him quiet, I think they go a long way to winning the game. Do you think Hibs can do that? If you look at the way they've been playing recently, well, I mean, they got, they obviously got a great clean sheet against against Celtic. Um, you know, they're playing this four four two. Uh, which didn't work at Ibrox, but worked against Celtic. So he's no changing it, is he? He's not going to change it. He, he, he tweaked it a little bit. He dropped Venti into, into McGregor. Um, so whether he does that, I don't think he would do that in terms of a, a Graham Shinney who controls the game. But it's going to be a close game, and it's a little bit of magic from someone in the forward areas. I think will win it. Score prediction: a two one to Hibs. Wait, one 0 to Hibs. Both gone high bees. Oh, yep. Okay, um, we'll move on and talk about Sunday. Uh, we perfect person to speak about this, of course. Won this competition with, with Rangers, been involved in the the coaching setup at Hearts with a little warm up for this game in, in the league last weekend. What does that What does that do as a player? I'm sure you'll have had situations like that before where you play a team twice yeah. a week, maybe even three times in a week. Is that strange? It is a little bit strange. Yes. Um, I think going back to the game at Ibrox, I think Hearts were very good. First half. The difference for me with Hearts is Shanklin. If if you get service to Shanklin, I think nine times out of ten he'll score. And he's got, he's proven he scored big goals. Um, you could call that the dress rehearsal for the big one. But Hearts will be should be coming into this saying for the bulk of the game we have done well. We lost two silly goals. First one being a penalty. Second one just a bit of bad marking. Great delivery. Um, I, th I think they've got to come in confident. I know they're not really hitting the heights again. So that's a th basically three teams, in fact, four teams at the form, let's say, mm. are, not, are not playing to their, their uh, mm. capabilities, I don't think. So it just shows you how wide open it is to, to go and potentially go and lift the cup. But Hearts have got to come in confident, uh, especially for the, for the way they played at Ibrox, and um, hope to get a little bit of luck. Rangers, a lot of injuries. Um, mm. It'll be interesting to see who plays, where they play, if he's going to change the formation or not. Um, but I, I can see this one being tight as well. I'm not. Tr I'm trying my hardest, not <laughs> but I can see it being nervy occasion. Hearts, it's a bonus if they go and get to a final. And brilliant, Rangers need to get to the final. Mm. If Rangers don't get to the final, then it's it's. Tough, tough times in Ibrox. Um, they need to get to the final and they need to go and get the first silverware uh, of the season uh, and of, what, when was the last time? Two years ago? Scottish Cup. It? Scottish Cup um, 2021. Mm -hmm. Same season as Europa League final. So yeah. it's, Rangers need to go every season looking for at least one bat silverware yeah. and that will be the league as priority. Mm. Um, and then anything after that's a bonus. Yeah, you said it's a bonus for Hearts to get to the final, but do you feel like there's, I don't know, an increased pressure on Hearts to win something soon? Because you were part of a, a coaching team at Hearts where it, was, it seemed like you were at Hamden season after season, numerous finals, semi-finals here, and it just didn't quite happen. Do you feel like the fans are expecting something to drop soon? Oh, they're definitely expecting it. They're 100% yeah. expecting it. You just need that little bit of luck. When we were involved, I think, with Celtic, Beat us in penalties. Um, the Covid season, was Scottish Cup final, yeah. aye, just as it was opening back up. Uh, unlucky that one. And then Rangers beat us in the Scottish Cup final um, just late on in the game yeah. with chances, but I, I think the expectation levels is for Hearts is they want a trophy. The, the fans demand a trophy. I don't think Hearts are playing at their capacity just now or basically have been this season. Um, what, what that's done to, I'm not sure. Um, but they've got a squad there, they've got a good manager and they've got a good squad there. So there's something not clicking. And Rangers, obviously, with the, with the new manager coming in, he's had a little bit of bounce, get a little bit of luck. Uh, the, the home game against Harps in the league had that a little bit of luck, but probably deserved it in the end. Um, a super tight game, this. Tough one to call. I'll leave that one to you, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would this do for Naismith? Because... Some Hearts fans already this season are, are, are starting to... Um, I, I wouldn't say they've, they've turned, turned on the manager, but some of them are a little bit upset with the, the style of play they were expecting, more attacking football. But surely if, if, if Stephen can pull this one off, beat Rangers like they nearly did 
last weekend and get themselves into a final that buys them a lot of time. Yeah, it does. I think that, uh, listen, as, as, as Jig said there, that the expectation levels in Edinburgh are huge. You know, I was at Hibs for seven years. They expect you to be at Hamden, they expect you to be getting to semi finals and finals and winning a trophy. Uh, whether that's possible with the, the, the dominance, particularly Celtic, have had over the last 10 years, it's, it's difficult to win a trophy in Scotland, Scottish football if you're not at Celtic and Rangers. Um, so, but this would give him such a shot in the arm. I think he is under a little bit of pressure. I think the performance at Rangers was, was pretty solid. I think they need, needed the second goal. I think one 0 they scored they scored early and it's easy to kind of sit deeper. You think I've got have got something to hold on to now, and I think they did hold on to it for you know nearly ninety minutes. You know, and they and they were punished at the end. But I, I totally agree with Jigger. I think Long Shanklin's a terrific player. I think he's a very very good player. And I think if you can get service into him, good cross balls, balls flashed across the goal. He scored against Celtic Rangers in his last two two appearances. His confidence must be through the roof. He was going through a a quiet spell in terms of goals, but great finish against Celtic, great header against Rangers. So he must be thinking to say, I can, I can score against the big boys. And it's a big game at Hamden. So I think if they can get service into him and get bodies up round about him, then I think Hearts have got a chance. But I think Rangers might just edge it, might just edge this. Um, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to extra time. I think it's really, really tight. Uh, but I think Rangers might just nick it 2-1. Yeah, if you look, you mentioned Lauren Chatton. Both of you are talking about how great... Shanklin is and I'm just wondering about the attacking threat of, of both of these two sides and I think when you compare the two sides it's undoubtedly Rangers have an overall stronger squad but when when the lineups come out of the weekend I think the Hearts have a stronger attack than Rangers yeah I think Shanklin would, would, agree? Shanklin would play for Rangers yeah, Shanklin would go into Rangers team right now yeah. and play um, and I don't, I don't know if that's a mixture of Shanklin being very good or the boys Rangers are saying no being very good and um, there's probably a mix there but I think in terms of Lauren Shankland, I was surprised that Rangers in the summer never went for him or a Kevin Nisbet or even a Van Veen, somebody that you know knows the Scottish football and he'll get you 15, 20 goals. Shankland would score 15, 20 goals and he's sleeping at Rangers. So I was surprised that they never went for him. They, they gambled and went abroad and it's not paid off so far. But I think that uh, I think you're right. I think Shankland uh, will be the best forward in the pitch. But if, if Hart's got the players around about him to give him service, and I think Rangers, we can't wait on guys like that. I've got this... I've got players in there that can feed their strikers. Have Hart's got that? I'm not so sure. Lee, would you agree with that? With yeah, about Warren Chapman. I agree with that. I think he's, I think he's more than good enough to be starting for Rangers every week. I think he'd score lots and lots of goals. He's he's a penalty box striker, um, and with the chances he can't well never have you seen. He can't well. It's a couple of weeks ago. He's he's played the ball through for mm. Dessers. I just see Shanklin scoring every week for Rangers, I really do. Um, absolute fantastic player, great attitude and such a lovely, humble guy. Can you see Rangers making a move for him? He's under a, a long contract, Hearts captain, and a little bit older, there's probably not much selling value. Do you think Rangers would still go for him? Would he still be worth going for as well? I think that's one for the, the board of the manager, uh, but... If you uh, if your Rangers and your contact in Hearts and Hearts can name their price, which could literally be anything, <laughs> anything they Put want. A figure on it. <laughs> so they're, if they're coming to the if if he was if if he was up out of contract at the end of the season, it'd be different. Yeah. But he's got a couple of years left, yeah. so Hearts can demand any sort of money for four million pound. I think they'd be looking for. Four million. Three, four, five million. I think. I think that's what I would. Well, they be. paid four million for Dessers, who's of a similar age as well. Well, there you go. That's your answer. Right, no. Interesting. Lee, let's be hearts with what it's welcome. <laughs> not, not the way it's going anyway. Um, Lee, let's talk about your own experience in the in the League Cup, three time winner of of course of of this competition. Um, a very memorable one in, in the middle of of those three against St Mirren, down to to nine oh men in the final. Talk us through your, your memories of that game. Oh, that was crazy. That game. Um, I played centre half. Centre mid, left wing, right wing, and centre forward that game. I remember that Danny Wilson gets sent off, and then Kevin Thompson gets sent off, and it went to nine men. And I was, I actually played centre half, a yeah, two, back four, and then we went to a three, and I was a right centre half, me and Big Davey Weir against Mehmet, and uh, the other one, they called them Big Bouncers, but a great big oh, oh, I know that was, that was That was the least enjoyable game I have ever <laughs> played. Uh, they were just booming it, but I think. Looking back on it now, and touched on this a little bit earlier, we went down to nine men, so St Mirren obviously had two extra men. Expectation changed, and I don't mm. know if they could cope coped yeah. with that. 
So everybody's saying, right, go and then go and win the game. And I, I think they, they froze a little bit. And I just remember, I think it was Davy Weir won the ball, pl played out to be nasy, he's crossed it for Kenny Miller. It's a great header and we just hung on. And at the end of it, and the boss were like, how did we do that? We're just <laughs> nine men. <laughs> so that that's probably one of the, the best memories I've got in football, but probably coinciding with probably the worst games to ever play on. I think just after Kevin Thompson got sent off, so after the second red card, two minutes later, you got booked yourself, we. Did I? Yeah. What? Well, <laughs> can you, can you not remember that? Big <laughs> jumper. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got, I got, I got the, the BBC article. Yeah. I read you got, you got booked straight after it. Can you not remember? The scent. No, you no, shouting stuff at the ref. I can't remember. I wouldn't have made the scent. If you're going to get booked, you're just well done it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think. Uh, no, I can't, I can't remember that at all. But that game, the ball coming in the box with a couple of minutes to go, and you're getting bounced about with the front two. It was oh, the relief. After that game, like if you're coming away from there and you've, no disrespect, but if you're coming away from there and you've just been beating a final with St Mirren, your heavy favourites, pressure's right on you right for mm -hmm. that next game um, and you're probably going to get battered for your performance. So it's more so relief when you when you go and win the cup. Mm -hmm. I, I felt other than, oh brilliant, we've won the cup, it was a wee bit of, thank God we've won that because... That's no worth facing that outside, you know. Aye. The the noise. Do you think that'll be similar for Rangers just now? That it's because Celtic are out of the competition, the expectation is so high yes. that winning this now is it's relief, it's not. That's Rangers need to win this yeah. trophy. But they don't need to go and play well in the semi final and the final if they get there. They need to go and win it. They just need to lift this trophy and if they don't, I think it will be very, very noisy on the outside. When you went down to nine men in that game, did you believe that you could still win? Be honest, did you, at that point you I must. I think there was a togetherness. Saying, yeah. Come on, we can still do it, lads. And there's maybe one or two. <laughs> 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 Is that you? <laughs> you, just, you just need to keep going. And was it 90 minutes you won it, or was it extra time? It was 84. 80 oh, 84. Late yeah, on, 84. so that, that last five, six, seven minutes, whatever, was oh, <laughs> funny. Actually, looking back now, a bit horrible at the time. Um, but great memories. Mm. That's what they're all about. There was another great one as well. Not sure if you played, but there was the game against Celtic, which was actually the last time Rangers won the League Cup. Yelovich. Yelovich hits the post and it, and uh, it comes back in. Ro rolls across the line. Were you playing that day? No, I no. wasn't. No. Injured? What, what was, what was... Uh, I think I was injured. Aye. I think I was injured, I. But well, that, was, that was good. Old firm ones. Jeez. Yeah. Mm. One off hit. Um, it's just, <sighs> fine margins, picking up runners at set plays. Mm. You're like... You're on it. Try to get contact with them. Just like, my man scores here, I'm never going to hear the end of this. Oh, yeah. it's, it gets to a, a little bit, you get in the mentality, is it's life or death. And I know it isn't, but it gets to you that much because the boys so are much pushing you, pulling you. Yeah. It's not worth it. It's not worth getting beat. So you just need to give everything you've got to, to go and try and win it. When you're on the pitch in, in those moments, you say, it's life or death, it's not worth getting beat. How do you... Like, how, how do you deal with that as a player? What what's going through your head? What you what you thinking? Because that to me that sounds like it could be quite distracting from what's actually going on on the pitch. Or does that make you hyper focused? I think it makes you more focused, yeah. and then you need to think about your composure and the, the surroundings and everybody in the stands is shouting uh, for you to get it in the box or whatever it is they're shouting. But you just need to go and play your own game and listen to your manager and your teammates and the co composures. Composure's a big thing and I think the Hibs and Aberdeen game, going back to that game, sorry, I think that'll be a big, big thing in the game. How the team set up to play, how they're going to play, are they going to pass the ball, are they going to go more direct? Aberdeen are probably more direct than Hibs, correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but they're That's probably right. playing off the second balls, will it suit Aberdeen more? Will Hibs actually turn up in the day and show composure to go and play and pass it through the thirds? and? It's it's interesting, so I think composure will, will be massive um, in the two semi-finals. Tam, that last final we were talking about there was 12 seasons ago. I believe that's the last time Rangers won the League Cup. That's just, maybe we, we asked the question, it was too long since Aberdeen have won it and they've won it more recently than Rangers. Surely 12 seasons without winning this domestic trophy is far too long for a club like Rangers? Yes, yeah, that's, that's far too long for a club like Rangers. I mean, traditionally it's always been Celtic Rangers that have dominated cup competitions. And you know some of the clubs that have won it. Uh, I think St Myrna have won it. Ross County have won it. You know, and so there's there's been teams in there that have won it, um, and Rangers have not been there. So, listen, Rangers going to this as heavy favourites. There's no doubt about that. The pressure's on Rangers to win this trophy. You know, Celtic are out. 
and they have been a thorn in the side for Rangers for a long time in cup, cup competitions. They don't have to face him now. You know, they're going to have to beat Hearts and then, then Hibs or Aberdeen in the final. So the pressure's on and it's how they handle it. You know, there's, there's guys in there who have won trophies, um, but there's guys in there who haven't and it's how they handle it on the day. You know, if Hearts score first, how do you react? You know, the pressure's on, the fans getting on their back. So the first goal in this game is probably crucial as well. I know Hearts scored it last week in the, in the league, but this is a bigger game. I think Rangers will go with high expectations of winning. And if Hearts score first, how do the Rangers players react to that? How important is this for players that have been at Rangers for a number of years? So I'm thinking your guys like James Tavernier, mm. Connor Goldson, Ryan Jack, who have won the league and they've won the Scottish Cup. But you always hear criticism from the fans, particularly of Tavernier, that oh, they're losers and they haven't won... Um, as many trophies as what they should have in, in their time at the club to add that third and final trophy so that they have completed the collection if you like of domestic trophies how important is that to you know, maybe alleviate some of the pressure from the fans on them as well yeah, it's, it is important because when you, when you sign for Rangers your ex the expectations is you need to win you need to win every week and you need to win trophies and unfortunately for the guys listen James Tavernier has been a t tremendous player for Rangers but he's always going to be criticised for, for his lack of trophies and that's because Rangers haven't been as good and Celtic have dominated um, but that doesn't take anything away from him as a player but when you're at Celtic and Rangers many trophies did you win that's what you're judged on at the end of your career and unfortunately for them they've not won as many as they probably should have so it's a great opportunity for them and you're right those guys are going to be very important in the dressing room before the game calm people down listen come on let's keep your composure play and uh, if they go one goal down, you know, not to panic. Um, so these guys are important, and if they can do that, if Rangers get the first goal, I think they win the game comfortably, to be honest. But if they don't, if Hearts get it, then I'm just interested to see how Rangers actually react to that in a big game. Yeah, it's a big game for these players, great opportunity for them. But we Likewise, the new manager, Philippe Clement, has just come in. He's now got a semi-final, and what is it, a wee fifth game? Mm -hmm. fifth, fifth game since, since taking over? He'll surely be looking at this licking his lips thinking this could be the dream start to management and Rangers could have a trophy win his first three months. Yeah. What a way to get the, the fans really on board with you is going turning up, putting in a performance and, and winning the game comfortably. I don't think it will pan out like that but I agree with you, I think he'll be looking at this game and saying if we can go and just get through this it'll alleviate a little bit of pressure as you're saying and then they can go back on the domestic campaign and it's done to what five points ish, let's say. Mm. So I think they've they've bridged the gap slightly. So where are we going to end up? Are we going to get a belief that we can go and win the league now? And that's I, I believe if they if they beat Hearts and go through at the final, he'll be drumming the message into the players. We've done that. That's part. Let's go. We've got the European campaign. Let's go and really challenge for. Of the week. Do you think? So, so the seventeenth of December is the final as well. So yes. you could go into that in the final, and then you get the old firm game on the thirtieth. Yeah. So in a, in a couple of weeks' time, going into the new year, getting that winter break, you could have closed the gap on Celtic, and you have a trophy in the cabinet, yeah. or it could be yeah. out the cup, and you're ten points behind yeah. Celtic. So does that make it, a break then? It's yeah. it's a crucial period. This this yeah. if if Rangers can get through this that that just before the new year, yeah. the final, and then the, the old firm game at Celtic is a crucial couple of weeks for Rangers. Yeah, absolutely. Will you prediction for this one? Rangers next time. Next time? Wow, OK. Tough. I wouldn't be surprised next time, but I think Rangers might win it 2-1. But they might win it next time. What's the thinking behind extra time? Why, why, why do you think? You know what? No, my thinking is, I think it's difficult to play a team back-to-back. -back. I found yeah. that as a player. I think if you oh, play the somebody... Under, the underdog or the favourite? For the team that's for the favourite, the team that's won, I think the other team is more motivated next okay. time they come up against you. I just, I don't know if there's any rhyme or reason. There's no statistics. <laughs> just throw that I just, I just <laughs> thought, I, yeah. I just think it's hard to I beat a team... Right. Twice in a week. Yeah. Um, so I think it'll be tight, and I'm, 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 but I still think Rangers will win because I've got a str stronger strength and depth. That's an interesting point. Why? Why do you think that is? Is there, is there any reason to it? Is there just something about it when you've beaten a team already? Oh, like, as, as, as a team that won, maybe a wee bit more complacent of just beat them, and another team that has got beat think. Or are you, are you, are you then, beat again? Are you then overthinking your own game plan if it's what? I don't know. I, I, you start I, to make changes or what? Power of the mind, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> it's, 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 it really, really is. <laughs> No, I, I, I just a cop out in the power in the mind. Start overthinking things, it will heighten. Mm. So yeah. it's uh, probably the manager's job to, to yeah. keep them obviously focused but relaxed. Yeah, right, let's um, finish with one thing from each of you. I'll start with yourself, Tam. Favourite League Cup memory from your career? Oh, God, I'm so bad at that. <laughs> uh, 
Price is not winning it. <laughs> <laughs> the favourite League Cup memory will be beating Rangers in the semi final at Hamden and scoring in the penalty shootout um, because. Who was the Rangers goalie? Kloss. Stefan Kloss. Kloss. And about three months prior to that, we played Rangers at Ibrox and I scored a, scored a great volley. And oh, did you? I've never heard that. You've not, <laughs> you've not spoken about that. Right? So, and it, but then it was too. You've shown everyone that video in the show. Just after half time. Just after half time. Just after half time, we got a penalty at Ibrox. I know. You're, oh, I, yeah, know. I know this is. I nearly, I nearly collapsed when we go to the penalty. But anyway, I got up and I tried to place it. And I, honestly, the booze, and I just bottled it. Just right? tackled I just it. tackled it. <laughs> Stefan Kloss just here. It was, and we could beat 5 2, right? So we play Rangers in the fin- eh, semi final. And the whole week build up to that week, my dad's like, you get a penalty, you better blast it, you better blast it, you better not place it again, right? So, <laughs> so, so it's three each in penalty. So your dad's right? <laughs> right. So it's three each and I'm walking towards the Rangers fans, at, right? At, we're right. taking in front of them and I'm getting, there's a booze, we're the crescendo, right? So I get up and I'm walking up to this boy and I just think, my dad told me to blast it. Right? So I get up, right? I, 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 honestly, Jig, it's on YouTube, right? I absolutely lashed it, right? And Stefan Kloss knew I was going to lash it, right? So he stood, and before he could even get his horn up, it was in the net, right? It was, a, it was the hardest shot I've ever had. And see if it never hit the net, it would have cleared the stand at me. It would have took a big runny and just bluttered it. And, and, and then we beat Rangers, Frank the Bournemouth the penalty, and we beat Rangers. So that was probably mine. That's crazy. Tam McManus scores a penalty. Frank Dubois misses it. I love that. Amazing. That's something else. That's just one a legend, another one Frank Dubois. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, do you take your dad's advice often on a football pitch? <laughs> Not as often as I should have. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> we, your favourite memory? Probably the St Martin game that we, yeah. we spoke about as a. You whole. just told us you hated it. Aye, but the, the, looking back, <laughs> of the best memory. I think that as a whole, to win a cup final with nine men, I think is well be remembered for a long time. Did you have anyone giving you advice before that game? Your dad, anyone? Nah. nah. Just don't mess it up. Just don't mess <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, well, let's, let's hope for some more classics this weekend. Um, between Hibs and Aberdeen on Saturday and Rangers and Hearts on Sunday. So thank you very much for listening and watching to this week's very special preview of the Via Play Cup semi-final. Thanks to Tam and thanks to Lee. We'll be back on Friday with Peter and the boys going through all of the weekend's action. See you then.